Right now is the time to buy Gabriel Davis in your fantasy leagues. All that and more in this episode of the Laton Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuk. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Network, your team every day. We would like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. I'm Kate Majuk. You can follow me on Twitter at Kate Majuk. And I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow him on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. And I promise... Um, we're going to get his voice back, uh, in, in tip top shape, uh, you know, hopefully by the end of this week, cause the AFC East is mm. a beast to behold. And we're continuing on with our buy sells for every single team in the NFL for your dynasty rosters today. One of our favorite teams to discuss from dynasty perspective, the Buffalo bills and Marcus, you came in hot this morning, uh, despite feeling a little bit under the weather, with a very spicy take that there's probably no wide receiver we should be more in on right now than Bill's wide receiver, Gabriel Davis. I'm going to give you the floor. Convince me. Why is Gabe Davis the guy to buy from the Buffalo Bills offense? This happens every year, right? We get really excited about a player. They fail to live up to these just absurd expectations and then they become cheaper the following off season. And then they get back to the expectations because remember at this time last year, I actually remember going to the fantasy football expo, doing a draft where Gabe Davis went at the end of the third round in a oh redraft my. league. Like that's because he was coming off that four touchdown game against Kansas city. We were all expecting this massive breakout to Gabe Davis's credit. He did break out. He did have the best season of his career. He went from 549 yards in 2021 to 836 yards, improved on his efficiency, averaged 17 and a half yards per reception, nine yards a target, scored seven touchdowns, saw, you know, got 48 passes, which was a big step up from what he did the first two years of his career. And yet it feels like everybody was so disappointed. And I, I don't get it. He's still only 24 years old. Uh, he's tied to one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Josh Allen. Nobody's going to challenge him for that wide receiver two role. And he is so incredibly cheap right now. Okay. He is wide receiver 54. And I'm just going to name you some of the receivers that are going ahead of him. We have Marvin Mims, who at best is probably the third receiver in Denver. We have Elijah Moore, who is the third receiver in Cleveland. Wandale Robinson, who might be like the fourth or fifth receiver with the Giants at wide receiver 51. Josh Downs at wide receiver 52. Juju Smith-Schuster at wide receiver 53. How can you not be get, buying Gabriel Davis this offseason? I mean, what's, what's interesting, you look at his dynasty ADP and this, like right now, um, kind of where his ADP was maybe like two years ago. Yes. Like this is not... Um, this, you know, when he was a, a total and complete question mark. Now, last year, I feel like I was one of Gabe Davis's biggest critics, just based purely on the fact that, uh, you know, Gabe Davis, I, I, I thought the expectations were a little too high going into year three. Everybody loves a third year breakout, but you're right. He did. He did break out by all accounts. Um, generally speaking, like I, I think it's hard to be disappointed, but Marcus, I think disappointment is probably the word that people would use just in general with this Buffalo bills offense, despite the fact that like this, this was still a good offense. Like I, I think, you know, we look at what the team chemistry felt like as an outsider in the 2022 season to close out the year after they had been through like an insurmountable tragedy as a team, mm -hmm. like, we looked at them and I, I think everybody would agree. The chemistry just felt a little bit off for this team. Uh, but it doesn't mean that they were inefficient or a bad team. This was a high scoring offense. You had Josh Allen coming off a, a UCL injury, which it, like we, 
you know, let's not forget there was a, a point in time where we were wondering if he was going to play the rest of the yep. season. So yep. I'm willing to maybe, you know, overlook the the catch percentage. We've you know seen it drop season by season. Uh, finished last year at 51.6 percent catch rate. Um, all of the other metrics across the board, he's increased in efficiency, yards per touch, yards per reception. Um, you know, it, receptions per game. It, it had a 98 yard touchdown last year, like because 98 Steelers. yards, man. Like it, it, he's, he's a talented receiver. And I do think that finally, uh, you know, a, another one of my concerns was like maybe that inconsistency on a week to week basis for Gabe Davis. But I do think when you're looking at now the price tag um, and where he's falling at, uh, you know, what we say wide receiver wide receiver 54 54 yeah uh at that price tag that's that's very much i think bakes in that that risk on a week to week basis because you no longer need him to be a wide receiver 2 for your team he could be a wide receiver 4 and exactly and yes if gabe davis is your wide receiver 4 that is a league winning strategy uh, cause you know, again, those, those week to week numbers, it, you might see some volatility there, but it's, it's hard to argue that this, this wide receiver, he's only 24 years old. Uh, that's <laughs> like, what I was going to make. Like he just turned 24 in April. Like he was a receiver coming from a little bit of a smaller school played at central Florida, uh, took a little bit of time to get up to the speed of the NFL. I, I would expect this to be the best year of his career. So even if his efficiency drops a little bit, but the targets go up, I, Katie would not be a stretch at all to say 950 yards, seven touchdowns and with a, a much higher ceiling than that, because he is yet to play a game without Stefan Diggs. I, I want to know what the target share looks like. If Diggs misses three games with a rolled ankle, like that's something we just haven't seen yet. And he's one play away from being the number one receiver on arguably the best offense in the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. I'm um, looking at some recent trades, Gabe Davis and a 2020 first round pick for Jackson Smith and Jigba and a 2024 second. Yeah. I'll take Gabe Davis. I've got a couple more for you. Actually, here's, here's some ones okay. that happened uh, in May. Gabe Davis for Cam Akers straight up. Oh, Gabe Davis. Yeah. Gabe Davis for a 2024 third round pick. Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis for Antonio Gibson. Gabe Davis. Yeah, and, and Gabe Davis for A.J. Dillon. Gabe Davis. That's the point is you can get A.J. Or excuse me, you can get Gabriel Davis for not a lot right now. So if you just need to improve kind of that wide receiver three spot, but you don't want to give up a ton, go out and get Gabe Davis because there's just not a lot of receivers out there with established roles on really good offenses with proven production over the last couple of years that, that are available this cheap. Yeah, and again, like I said, the the beauty of Gabe Davis for me really comes with the fact that you don't need, like, at that price tag, you don't need anything from him. No. Period. Like, nope. if he contributes to your team, it's a plus, um, and and he will a hundred percent. He's going to pay dividends, um, but that price tag definitely makes up for any inconsistencies that you're going to see on a week to week basis. We know the touchdown upside is there. We know the con connection with Josh yep. Allen and like that, that connection and potential for scoring touchdowns is real. Um, so even, you know, even on those, those games, uh, let's say week 13 uh, up against the new England Patriots had seven targets, only caught two of them for 15 yards, but had the touchdown to make your day that much better. Like even, even amidst like a, a low floor, that touchdown upside is always there, especially with Josh yes. Allen at quarterback, like, and, a healthy Josh Allen, the healthy the Josh Allen, which we should see that offense be even more efficient this offseason. Actually, it, it, they've also added the offensive line. They they signed Connor McGovern. Uh, they drafted Osiris Torrance in round two. So I think the passing attack should be even better in 2023. Kate, let's talk about a player that you want to sell, uh, which includes a certain rookie tight end that was drafted in round one. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That is $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. I think it's a good time to bet on the uh, the Nuggets to win Game 5. It 
think they're going to do it tonight and pull it off. Uh, there's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. We would like to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen of the day. Matt and Ryan will be back uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday to continue our AFC East uh, breakdown. Kate, you and I back on Thursday. But now we are talking about Dalton Kincaid and why you should sell him right now in your Dynasty Leagues. Kate, what are your thoughts? Love Dalton Kincaid. And it, for all of our everydayers, this is probably going to be a like a big shock uh, just to hear that I'm looking to sell Dalton Kincaid, but baby, this is a this is all about the market, right? Dalton Kincaid, I love him. He, he's the first uh, tight end drafted in this 2023 draft class. That was my favorite uh, pre-draft bet was Dalton Kincaid to be the first tight end off the mm-hmm. board. It cash, baby. Yes. Uh, but since then, I mean the 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 hype on Dalton Kincaid has been through the roof, and now. He is being on drafted on average as the tight end seven in dynasty startups. Now I get it. Like we, we just hyped up Gabe Davis, uh, you know, who, you know, has been inconsistent to this point uh, had, you know, one of the, the lowest, he had his lowest catch rate of his career. Like uh, we're hyping up Gabe Davis. What, what doesn't click with Dalton Kincaid, who is the best receiving tight end in this class? Like, what comes down to is the the a the usage of the tight end position for Josh Allen, the presence of Dawson Knox, who I don't think is going to just suddenly disappear anytime soon. Uh, like this this price tag worries me significantly. Dawson Knox, he signed a four year fifty two million dollar contract. Yep. That is a big booty contract. Okay. Like, and you know, even from a, a dead cap perspective, like he is locked into this offense for the next two years at the bare minimum, uh, carries $26 million in dead cap this year. Um, look to 24, $20.28 million in dead cap. Then it becomes like a, a stomachable, um, separation, Mm -hmm. if you will, in the 2025 season. But, that's two years that you're going to have both of these young, talented tight ends be competing for snaps. And I think uh, we're getting really hung up on the idea that, okay, we're going to see Dalton Kincaid come in. He's going to play slot. It's going to be great. But I, I think that we kind of have to worry. I think this was a perfect ad for the Buffalo Bills specifically. But from a dynasty perspective, we know, hey, tight ends take – a while to develop in this league. Uh, We don't often see tight ends hit their peaks in this league until they hit their, you know, age 25, 26 season. Uh, Don Kincaid, you know, despite the talent, I think there's a a very reasonable concern that he's not going to live up to that ADP of, of tight end seven among 107 or sorry, among the 127 quarterbacks, right. uh, Who have thrown passes, uh, since the 2019 season, do you know where Josh Allen ranks in tight end target rate? Probably pretty low. 107th. Yeah. That is a 13% tight end target rate. And again, Dawson Knox not going anywhere. Dawson Knox, excellent rapport with Josh Allen in the red zone. I don't think that magically disappears. You're going to need Dalton Kincaid to get a whole lot of volume. And I think for that to happen, I, I just don't think it's going to happen anytime you're going to need, you're going to need a lot of injuries. Josh Allen can spread the ball around. Uh, you know, if it's not, if it's not Stefan Diggs, he'll spread it around and it, yep. it's Stefan Diggs yep. or bust. And Don Kincaid, I don't think he's going to suddenly come into this league, command a hundred targets when there are this number of receiving weapons. Now, my, I, I'm not saying I'm out on Dalton Kincaid, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell him at the price of tight end seven. And then I'm going to come back um, and I'm going to just take the gamble that we're going to see a drop in ADP. Once we don't get that Mm -hmm. immediate gratification of Dalton Kincaid performing as the lead tight end on that team. 
it that's a, a strategy that has paid off a million times over at the tight end position, whether it's Kyle Pitts, uh, whether you go back a little bit further with some of the other tight ends, including, you know, even TJ Hawkinson, right? Yes. Everybody We're had- just seeing TJ Hawkinson bounce back. I feel like from yeah. that, that draft hype and it it's, it's crazy that David that it Njoku, took him that long. Evan yeah. Ingram. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. I'll, I'll give you a real life example of a trade that I made with in, involving Dalton Schultz over the last couple of weeks. I had the 106 in a tight end premium rookie draft. I knew everybody in the league liked Dalton Kincaid, so I took Kincaid at 106. I was able to flip him in that same draft for, I think it was 109 and 112, in which I was able to grab Michael Mayer and Sam Laporta. Now, I like Kincaid better just on the surface, but if I can grab those two instead of Kincaid, that's what I'm going to do all day long. And you you look at the, the ADPs right now, Michael Mayer, tight end 11, Sam Laporta, tight end 10, but those guys are going significantly after Dalton Kincaid in your, in your startup drafts. Again, we like Dalton Kincaid. We like the long-term future of this, but I just don't see him being somebody who you can trust in your lineups every single week for the next couple of years until maybe a Gabe Davis moves on in free agency or, you know, they move on from Dawson Knox or Stefan Diggs. I just, I just don't see that happening right away. Yeah. And I, I think because of that, you know, I'm going to bet that, yeah, I'll, I'll take that, that gamble. It is a gamble. Every single time you, you sell a player, it's a gamble because uh, obviously the future is quite unknown, but I'm going to take the gamble that, that, you know, Historically speaking, most of these rookie tight ends do end up disappointing, uh, even in their second year. Like, you know, Trey McBride felt like such a sure thing last year sure. and uh, everybody was all in and except for now, um, you know, like. Uh, do you know it, how many it, tight ends in NFL history, rookie tight ends in NFL history have gone over 700 yards in their first season? Just guess. I don't. Uh, 15, six, six in NFL history. And that includes Kyle Pitts who did it in 2021 and Evan Ingram who did it. Uh, was that the 2018 draft? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something around 2017, I think. Uh, so we, we've had two examples in the last 70 years of the NFL of a rookie tight end coming in. And it's not like 700 yards is a ton of yards. I mean, it's going to make you a borderline tight end one in fantasy, but that's how infrequently it happens. So expecting Dalton Kincaid on an offense that has Diggs, has Gabe Davis, has Dawson Knox, who you mentioned the contract. Like they gave him a sizable contract, and he is a little bit of a red zone threat to, to put up that type of production in year one. And even in year two, seems pretty unlikely. Okay, let's talk about a player that we're holding right now in Dynasty because – uh, the value is either too high or you just might not be able to get enough back in a trade next. All right, Kate, I want to talk about Stefan Diggs, who we've mentioned a few times on this podcast. Right now, he's being drafted as wide receiver 10, just behind guys like Amon Ross, St. Brown, T. Higgins, and head of players like DK Metcalf and Drake London. Why are you holding Stefan Diggs? It just comes down to the like the historical data, right? Um, when you're looking at aging wide receivers, and you know, wide receiver is the position that tends to age a bit better um, a- across the NFL, as opposed, to, you know, especially as opposed to running backs. Uh, the the concern here it it comes down to the fact that he is aging. I do think the fact that um, the Buffalo Bills, like while he's on the field, he's going to be, you know heavily targeted he's going to be target number one um but how long you know even if he is a successful nfl player in his age um how long is he able to like continue with continually um maintain that production through the next several years uh looking at wide receivers since the 2015 season there is only one receiver um, in the entire NFL in that entire span who has been over the age of 29 and has had more than three seasons averaging more than 14 fantasy points per game. Do you know who that is? No. 
It's Antonio Brown. I figured. Who did it with three different teams in yep. that span, which is freaking nuts. Like, let's yep. talk about Antonio Brown on a different podcast because he's a freak. Uh, but like Pittsburgh Steelers, Patriots, Bucks. He had four of those such seasons, but like looking at the the rest of the crew, you had Jordy Nelson, 2016, Julian Edelman had two seasons, 2015, 2018, um, Julio Jones, 2018, 2019, Larry Fitzgerald had one such season. There's a, like, there's that concern that even if Stefan Diggs maintains his value on the field, how long does that continue to uh, translate to fantasy production at a high end. Um, you know, I think if you're in a win now window, Stefan Diggs is the perfect hold. Like, you know, oh, yeah. exactly what That's you're going to get. Uh, and you know, I don't think Dalton Kincaid moves the needle for this team and, and what targets we might see for Stefan Diggs. But if you are a team that like, you know, by the time, you know, Dawson Knox could be leaving this off. Like by the time this offense looks a little different, let's say two years. Um, if that's when you're looking to start to compete, I'm probably going to want to move on from Stefan Diggs and, yep. and, you know, just start that turnover process now and start to accumulate assets while he's at his peak. And there aren't necessarily questions like he's going to, he's going to be turning 30 years old this season. How long do we, expect him to produce at the highest level for fantasy i don't know it's a good question what you mentioned the age it, he's just such an outlier compared to the rest of these receivers like i'll read all the receivers ahead of him and behind him uh in, in their age justin jefferson 23 jamar chase 23 aj brown 25 cd lamb 24 garrett wilson 22 Jalen waddle 24 chris Olave 22 Amon Ross St. Brown, 23. T. Higgins, 24. DK Metcalf, 25. Drake London, 21. Devontae Adam or Devontae Smith, 24. And then there's Stefan Diggs, who turned 30 this year, right? So it's, it's just, just like, such a, think, it's such an outlier. Think about uh, can you can you give me the ADP right now for Devontae Adams? Because I think uh, that's a very yeah. reasonable comp. Yeah, absolutely. Devontae Adams right now is being drafted as wide receiver 17. Uh, and he's 30. He's just a little bit older than Stefan Diggs coming off arguably the best season of his career. Yeah. Now, like if you tell me I can get Devonte Adams plus and, and swap out Stefan Diggs, I'll do that all day. Now, like the I want to be would clear. Do is Cooper Cup, the Cooper Cup oh, is yes. wide receiver 16 and he, he'll be 30 this year as well. I would do that. I would also mention Tyreek Hill, who's being drafted below Stefan Diggs by a fairly significant amount. He's actually younger than, Stefan Diggs, uh, but going after him. Yeah, I think that it's not necessarily even when you compare Stefan Diggs to some of the younger wide receivers, because I think it it is. It's it's when you're building a dynasty team and you know your goal is longevity and your goal is to, to find youth that can then produce at the t- highest level neck. Like that it, the comp between Stefan Diggs and some of these younger guys, not necessarily the best one for one comparison. But when you look at Stefan Diggs and his price tag versus Devonta Adams, Cooper cup, like that is when he becomes a sell. Cause yep. if I can swap Stefan Diggs for Cooper cup for Devonta Adams, plus I'm going to do that 10 times over the upside is similar. Um, and I, I don't think the, you know, the, the downside, like you're not, the, the gap is insignificant yep. between these players. So uh, if I can take advantage of, of that difference in price tag, well, sure. But the reason why we're going to be holding on to him and not selling him for, you know, a Drake London or a Devontae Smith is, Kate, when we do our kind of weekly rank, rankings for this season, how many receivers – each week, are you going to rank over Stefan Diggs? Justin Jefferson, yes. But then it's like, man, on a week-to-week basis, I probably would take Diggs over Jamar Chase, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Tyreek Hill, all those guys. Yeah, um, and like, because, you know, what you get with Stefan Diggs, you get high upside, obviously. But you also, I think, get one of the safer wide receiver ones in the NFL. Um, like, you know exactly what connection he and Josh Allen have. Uh, you know, you're going to get a healthy Josh Allen. Like 
on a week to week basis, yes, there's not going to be a single moment barring some sort of significant injury. God bless. Like it, knock on wood, he's going to be a top five receiver every single week in my rankings uh, until he proves that he should not be there anymore. And that is the difference. Like you're getting a sure thing. And that's why you can't make a blanket statement, go sell, go buy. Yeah. It's because it's so dependent on your dynasty teams, where you're at in a build. Because if you need a reliable, you know, wide receiver one and and you're in a, a tight win now window, yep. probably no better player to buy than Stephon Diggs. So in, in his three years with Buffalo, he's averaged again, this is average. 1,400 yards and 10 touchdowns. And that's with Josh Allen missing a little bit of time with injury, including the elbow thing last year. You're getting like wide receiver, like the wide receiver one or the wide receiver two type of production every single week. And that's why we're still holding him at wide receiver 10, despite the age and despite, you know, there being so many good options available after him. Yep. I'm, I'm all over it. Um, yeah. It's going to be hard though. Like for, for those, those people that, you know, maybe the, the conversation we've had has, has made you start to realize that like, Oh, that, that difference in price gap between a, a Stefan Diggs and a Cooper cup, like, yeah, the, the difference in production, not necessarily enough. So if, if you can get Cooper cup plus like that realization is no, going to be a hard one because you're not going to want to sell Cooper cup. No, or you're I not going to want to sell. Stephon Diggs. I, I just wonder how likely those trades are. Like if you are the Stefan Diggs owner and you're going to the Cooper cup owner and saying, Hey, what can you give me on top of Cooper cup to get Stefan Diggs? I just don't know if those trades are happening very frequently in your league. What would it take for you? I probably would want a second round pick. I don't, I don't think that's like, but I get it. if I'm if, if I'm the yeah. Cooper Cup owner, I don't know if necessarily if I'm giving up a second round pick to go from Cup to Diggs because just like we saw last year, whenever Cup plays, he's going to produce at about the same level as Stephon Diggs. So there's, it's probably one of those things that like yes, you look at the rankings and there's a seven spot difference, but when it comes to actually trading, I don't know if you can get much value there. See, I think generally speaking, like because there are questions, like for example, Cooper Cup with Matthew Stafford, right? Like Matthew Stafford, I, I think is a, a reasonable and fair question mark there in, in terms of like, if he is out, you know, if, if he moves on, what does this team look like? Um, like, is it really going to be Stetson Bennett? Like it, no, you, you look at the question marks there. Then you look in, you know, let's say the Raiders offense, Jimmy Garoppolo, like, is he going to be healthy? It, you know, this off season, we get a whole slew of, of, and I think we, we all know that the, you know, the safety net that you get at quarterback with Stefan Diggs, I do think that's the differentiator in yep. terms of like the, the safety between a Stefan Diggs versus Cooper cup, Devonte Adams. But I do think that gap is very real. Just even, even in my experience with like trade negotiations. And I think it comes down to Josh Allen. And I don't think that's a, I don't think it's like a, a bad thing no. necessarily. I don't think it's incorrect, but I'm just saying, I think the gap is real. And even if I can get a, a smidgen of plus, I'll, I'll take it. I, I would agree with that. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Get Matt and Ryan back on Tuesday and Wednesday to continue our AFC East previews. Okay. You and I will be back on Thursday. Uh, go follow the show. Uh, wherever you get your po podcast, we are free and available on all platforms. Go check out our show on YouTube. You can follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Magic. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you next time.